and screen share. Okay, you should have sharing abilities now, so. Perfect, thank you so much, appreciate yes. that. Thank okay. you. All right, we're ready to go. Jose, if you have questions. I know it says KW Rocks, but it's somebody else's Zoom, so. No problem. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for uh, allowing me to come in and uh, present to you guys some of our features in the MLS. And one of those new features is called uh, privacy listings. Now, just like the name says, it is a new status, uh, excuse me, a new property type where you can enter your listings and keep them private. That means that those private listings do not get shared. They do not go out to third party websites like Zillow, Redfin, uh, Trulia, Realtor.com and all these other websites that are out there. Privacy listings are just kept private within the MLS. Now, this is a CLAW only feature. If you are a member of CLAW, then you have this feature where you can use and uh, create a private listing as of right now. Uh, once other uh, MLSs start getting that new feature, then we might be able to, you know, data share these private listings. But for now, it is only for CLAW listings, uh, for CLAW members, excuse me. Uh, so I just want to go over some rules and regulations and some do's and don'ts about uh, privacy listings. And you can find those in the MLS. Uh, as you can see, I'm logged in right now into the MLS. And we have a portlet on our homepage called Quick Links. And inside quick links, you, maybe you have already noticed, but you see that there's a link that says privacy property type. So when you click on this, it brings up a PDF form, a PDF file. And this PDF file pretty much explains a little bit about what the privacy property type is, and also the do's and don'ts, uh, what does privacy property allow you to do and what it doesn't allow you to do. And it also uh, in here in this form, in this file, you'll see uh, a comparison between privacy listings and coming soon listings. So a lot of agents tend to confuse that thinking that, oh, they're probably uh, similar or probably the same, but they're not. So let's take a look at this right now. And then we'll take a, a look at how we can add a private listing and how to search for privacy listings. Uh, so in this form that we clicked on or this file that we opened up, uh, you can print this if you like, you can have a copy with you, but you can always find that in quick links. Uh, let me just remind you a little bit what we did. What we did was we, uh, once we log into the MLS homepage, we want to locate quick links on the homepage and inside you'll see the link privacy property type. And that opens up this file here. And the, pr the purpose of privacy property type is to support the privacy needs of your seller while meeting mandatory submission requirements. What is that mandatory submission requirements? Uh, what does that mean? Uh, that means that uh, we're all aware of the new National Association of Realtors rule, the NAR rule eight, where uh, you cannot publicly uh, market your listing uh, unless it's in the MLS. So once it's in the MLS, you're more than free to uh, market your listing, right? So privacy property type meets those requirements, okay? So it is in the MLS, even though it's a private listing, but it is in the MLS system. So you're more than free to market that listing to the public. Now, what are the requirements? Uh, now, APN, street Jose, number. Uh, yes. I'm sorry for the interruption. Oh, no I just want to confirm, you did say that this privacy and this presentation is for CLAW only, correct? For the moment, not yes. Chrisnet. Not CRISNET or PWR or any of the other boards, MLSs. Correct. For the okay. moment, yes. I just had okay. that question asked, so I wanted okay. to make sure. Thank yes. you. Yes, no problem. Yes, so for the moment, it's only for CLAW members, okay? It's available for CLAW members, so. Uh, but like I was saying, so the requirements, okay. Now, APN, street number, street name, and map location are not required, um, excuse me, are required, but are not displayed in the listing itself. It is a private listing, so we do not display uh, any address information, the map location, or the APN number, okay? However, to enter the listing, the APN number is required. Okay, uh, photos are allowed. You can have up to 10 photos for private listings uh, are not required. You don't have to put any uh, if you don't want, but you can add up to 10 photos if you like. Uh, a new optional landmark field is uh, now available where you can indicate proximity. For example, maybe you have a listing in Beverly Hills and uh, it's in the uh, Beverly Hills flat uh, area. 
Okay, uh, or maybe it's in the Wilshire corridor area or it's something like that. So you can specify a landmark or uh, a location and area of where the property uh, is located, a proximity. Okay? Uh, it's not required, but it's a new option uh, you can enter there. Uh, the Claw Privacy Seller Consent Form is required. I will show you where you can uh, access this, this consent form. Uh, you'll download it, you can fill it out, and then you, you will upload it to the private listing when you add the listing. So it is required. And of course, you do need a listing agreement for any listing that you add in the MLS. Okay, so those are the requirements. Some of the do's and don'ts. Uh, let's look, go over the do's. So you are allowed to do showings. Okay, so like if you want to do a, uh, a private showing or schedule a showing on the property, you are allowed to do showings. You can share these private listings through email, text, or print. You are allowed to add listing, private listings into a card. Okay? If you don't, are not familiar with our listing card feature, you can save listings into a card. So you can add private listings into a card. You can also create a save search and set up an automatic email notification. So whenever there's a new private listing uh, that matches your criteria, you can get uh, set that up so that it automatically notifies you. Uh, you can also run hot sheets on private listings, and you can also run statistics on these private listings. Some of the things that you cannot do are open houses. Now, I know I said uh, showings are allowed, which is our, you know, by scheduled, right? An appointment, you schedule an appointment to show the property, that's fine. Open houses is not allowed because, uh, well, Open houses are open to everybody, right? So uh, open houses are not allowed yet, okay? We're still under the, uh, I know COVID-19, you know, the pandemic has, uh, you know, uh, we're slowly getting back to normalcy, but for now, open houses are still not allowed. Uh, you cannot run any CMA on a private listing. Uh, you cannot purchase an ad in the MLS broker caravan. Okay, if you're familiar with our weekly magazine where you can purchase ads on uh, your property you can, uh, or your listing, uh, for private listings, you cannot purchase any ads on our broker caravan magazine. Uh, broker agent websites. So it does not go out or it does not syndicate to private or broker websites. So like if you have a personal website and, you, um, and listings are showing up on your, on your website, Private listings do not go out to IDX or VOWs, which are virtual office websites. Okay? And it does uh, not allow you to select withdrawn or coming soon statuses. Okay? Every status is available, active, uh, you know, pending, canceled, expired, uh, coming, uh, excuse me, um, uh, active under contract. Okay? But you, you cannot select withdrawn or coming soon as a status. Okay? Now, if we scroll down in this, uh, like I mentioned, this we also provide a comparison between privacy listings and coming soon listings. And again, we won't go over every single thing here, but I do want to point out some things in here. Like I mentioned, uh, syndication, it does not go out to third party websites. So private listings will not be showing up on Zillow or Realtor.com or Homes.com. So no syndication. And data share, we like I mentioned, right now it's only for CLAW uh, members, okay? Only for CLAW members. So as you can see there, it does not, uh, uh, we do not data share with other MLSs, uh, PFAR, ChrisNet, uh, ITEC, uh, Orange County MLS, and all these other MLSs that are out there uh, as of right now, okay? So as you can see there in parentheses, shared only if reciprocated. So once these other uh, MLSs like ChrisNet and all these other ones, once they have a uh, private listing property type uh, and if they share with us, then of course, we'll be more than glad to share with them as well. Uh, but till now, uh, until, until then, uh, we do not uh, data share private listings. Uh, and you can see that coming soon, we do share coming soon with other MLSs. So, uh, so sometimes a lot of agents get that mixed up, you know, that, uh, that they think that we do share private listings. But like I mentioned, and I keep mentioning, as of right now, we don't share uh, private listings, okay? Uh, another thing is that private listings is a property uh, type, okay? It's not a status, it's a property type. So days on market are counted. 
Okay, so as soon as you enter a new private listings and you make it active, then uh, days of market will start counting. And for uh, coming soon listings, it'll stay at zero for 21 days, which is a maximum uh, day period for uh, coming soon listings. Okay, so it'll stay at zero while it's under coming soon, but for private listings, it starts counting right away as soon as you enter a new private listing. And the duration of the private listing is the uh, life of the listing contract, okay? So if you have a contract signed for uh, three months to uh, have a private listing, then you know it'll be a private listing for those three months or for the life of the contract, okay? Like I mentioned for coming soon, it's 21 days and it'll automatically switch or change to active status, okay? So this form, like I, like I mentioned, you can print this out if you want, or if you wanna go over all the uh, comparison of coming soon and private listings, one more time to find that, you just go to quick links and inside quick links, you see privacy property type, okay? Now we're ready uh, to add a new private listing into the MLS. So one of the things that I mentioned that is required is the privacy consent form. And you can find that form when you're adding the listing or if you need it before, you wanna have it printed and signed before you add the listing. You can go under the help menu on the top and you're gonna go down to compliance corner. Okay, so we click on help, we click on compliance corner and here you're gonna see some, all these different little links in there. But at the bottom left side here, you're gonna see privacy property type seller consent form. Just click on that link. It's going to uh, open up the PDF file. You can go ahead and print this file if you need to uh, fill it out. So you can fill it out and have it signed by the owner because you are going to uh, upload this when you add the listing. Okay. So basically this form just says that, uh, you know, the owner uh, for this or whatever property address uh, has agreed or is uh, consent. Has it, uh, they're giving you consent to add the listing as a private listing. So basically, there's uh, all the rig rules uh, about uh, private listing, and uh, we need the seller or the owner to sign and date. Once sorry? this is, yes. I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt real quick. We had a question. Ahead. Um, ahead, yes. The club membership that is affiliated with um, Beverly Hills Board of Realtors, is that correct, your MLS? Uh, well, they are, uh, yes. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, the Beverly Hills Board, Southwest, and Malibu Board. Okay. But perfect. but we have eight uh, agents or members that are in the Valley. They use ChrisNet, but uh, so they don't use ChrisNet. They are SRAR members and they're members with the CLAW. So you can belong okay. to any board. Okay, really perfect. Matter. We had someone asking that's a fairly new agent. So I just okay. want to make sure that they realize this could be information that is pertinent to them or not. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, cool. No problem. Okay, so uh, we have this form filled out and ready to go. So now we go back to the MLS and we're ready to add our private listing. So what we do is we access SLIM, right? So if you've uh, entered listings before, the same steps. We go to listings and we go to SLIM and we are gonna add a residential. So this is only for residential, by the way, okay? So we click on residential and we're in SLIM, okay? SLIM dashboard here. And what we do is we're gonna create a new listing. So we click on create new listing residential right here on the right side. Click that big blue button there. And you notice that we have all the property types and there's also privacy, okay? So even though it is a single family home or a condo property or income or whatever it is, we still have to select privacy, okay? Uh, a lot of agents think that, oh, well, it's a single family home, so I'm gonna go to single family. But then once they complete the listing, they notice it's not a private listing, it's a regular for sale listing for single family or whatever property type. Make sure you select privacy under property type, okay? Once we're in there, then we can go ahead and uh, specify that it's a single family or a condo, okay? So we click on privacy and this will take us to where we can enter the APN number. Now, I know I mentioned that APN number is not displayed in the listing, However, to add the listing, you do need the APN number, okay? Uh, so if you enter the APN or you can search for the address if you don't know the APN number. So I'm gonna pretend I'm gonna enter our office here. So I'm gonna put in our office address and I'll hit search, okay? Or like I said, you can enter the APN number and hit search. We select the correct property type. And basically what that does is just uh, uh, helps us to fill out 
uh, some information on the property. Okay, so it saves us some time, like bedrooms and bathrooms and all that information. All right, so now we have public records. We're gonna go ahead and review the public records for this APN that we selected. Now you notice that the street number, street name, uh, street modifier and all the street, uh, the address information is grayed out. So it's not required because we don't show that information. Okay, so even if I try to enter it, it won't allow me to enter the address because it's a private listing and we wanna keep it private. So we don't show the address. Okay, so we go down and then we can confirm all the rest of the information on our private listing. Okay, uh, total bedrooms. If we need to make that correction, we can go ahead and add that. Uh, information here and once we're ready we go ahead and click on uh, next on the top right and then this will bring us to the input sheet where we input all the information on our listing uh, again if you've entered listings in the mls in the system you're already familiar with uh, all this information on how to add a listing uh, we are you know uh, have different sections contract info showings photos uh, and we have sub uh, sections in uh, each different section here. We can add all the information. Uh, I, I am required to add 28 items. So all these items that are required, I must fill out, okay? Uh, and so I just wanna point out when it comes to private listings that we do need to upload that consent form, okay? So uh, once we get to the contract info section, you'll see here that there is a section for the seller consent. And here I can also download that seller consent form. So just in case you don't have that form or you forgot to print it out and you started your private listing, once you get to consent, the uh, seller consent form area, you can click on the link right here and you can download the consent form from here as well, okay? So you do have access to that form from here, from here and you can print it out, fill it out. And then once you have it ready, you can go ahead and upload. So we click on choose file. This will allow us to select that file, that consent form. So I have a form right here, uh, PDF file, where is it at? Okay, so I think it's under documents, there we are, there he is, okay. So there's my consent form and all I do is just open it up and it's gonna upload that consent form. So you see right there shows me the name of that consent form. So now it's been uploaded. The next step I need to do for a private listing is check the box for this agreement. And by checking this box, you agree that you have uploaded that consent form. You understand the rules. The rules are what we went over on that form when we click on that link where it shows you the do's and don'ts. Okay, that's basically the rule, but uh, you can go ahead and understand the rule regarding privacy property type. You understand that the MLS have reserves all the rights to remove any listing from its database that does not conform to the privacy property requirements. And also you understand that the MLS has all the rights to request the listing agreement at any time if our compliance department uh, requires it, okay? So uh, once you go uh, check this box, then we can continue with adding our uh, private listing. Now we can just go ahead and add all the information that's required. Once all the information that's required is filled out and we enter all the information on our private listing, then what we could do is just click on proceed to submit on the top right, and that'll create a new private listing uh, in the system under your, uh, under your account, okay? So the steps to adding a private listing is exactly the same as adding any regular listing, just uh, two things. Make sure you click on privacy when you're selecting a property type and make sure that you have the consent form so you can upload it to uh, the system. Once we have the privacy listing, it's gonna show up like any regular listing when we do a search. Okay, now how do we search for privacy listings? Let's go back here to the homepage. And like any regular listing or uh, search that we do, we do have a property type for privacy. So you see here under the listing searches portlet, uh, there is a new uh, property type right there. You see privacy. If I wanna search for privacy listings, just click on privacy there. This will take me to the privacy listing search page. And just like any regular listing, maybe I'm looking for some coming soon that are private, maybe some actives right now, okay? 
And this is fairly new. So uh, agents are still barely uh, familiarizing themselves and knowing and learning about privacy listings. So as you can see, in the entire MLS right now, there's only six private listings entered in the system, okay? Uh, as, as, as you can see, uh, we have a option right here if I'm looking for single family or condos that are private. So I can say I'm only looking for single family listings that are entered as private listings. Okay, so that'll narrow down my results. So now you see that now I only got five. So it looks like one was a condo uh, or an apartment um, private listing. So and then I can continue with the rest of my criteria. I can put in the price. If I'm looking at a specific price range, if I'm looking in a specific area, I can put in the area or city or zip code. I can go down and enter all the criteria to narrow down my results and match my criteria when I'm looking for private listings. Now, you notice that when I'm searching for private listings, nothing is showing on the map. Even though I got five listings as my results, they are not being shown on the map because we do not show the location, the actual location of the property uh, that's private. So there's nothing to see on the map. If I wanna read more information on these listings, we just go ahead and click on view listings. That'll bring up the results like any regular search that we do. We have our one line report here. We can see that some are still active. Well, I did select active. Uh, it looks like these agents did upload some photos. Okay, I can view the photos like any regular listing. Okay, if there's some photos available, I can click on the MLS number and this will bring up uh, the agent detail short report. Once again, we do not show the uh, map location. So that's why you see no map available. And we have our little privacy listings logo to specify that this is a private listing. Uh, you can see that there are no, there is no address. Okay, looks like this agent entered the, uh, uh, the look, uh, not, no, excuse me, I lost the train of thought right here. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, they enter that information. So it gives us an idea of where it's located. So I have a quick question for you, Jose. Yeah. I'm with um, PWR and, and the MLS. Uh -huh. This privacy listing, I have, haven't seen this feature. Is that anything similar to a coming soon? No. So remember, we did that so, uh, so that they don't give out the address because they want that particular privacy. So yes, it's uh, to keep the listing private. Um, you know, we are in LA. We are in the Hollywood area. There are a lot of you know celebrities and famous people that will put their property uh, listed in the MLS. They want to keep it private. But yeah, so private listings is not the same as coming soon. Okay, so two different things. Coming soon is a status. Private listing is a property type. Okay. So yes, we uh, right now we like I mentioned we do not share private listings with other MLSs. If at some point they do create a private listing and they share with us, then we'll more than glad reciprocate with them. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, you can see there, like I was saying, all right, uh, they give us an idea of where the property is located. So in this case, we have the Truesdale Estates area, and uh, it does show us the city uh, and uh, um, zip code. Okay, that it will show us for all private listings. And we can also see here on the right side that it is a property type privacy, just in case, all right, we uh, wanna know what kind of property this is. Uh, it is a private C listing. Now, you, like I mentioned, you can uh, request showings. Uh, showings are allowed. So uh, if you uh, haven't learned about our new Showings Plus feature, uh, we do have an option to request a showing on the listing. And you can see here that uh, I can go ahead and request a showing on the property. Uh, I can set up a showing re uh, request with the listing agent. So uh, we can continue going down and you can see uh, the rest of the information. It is available like any regular listing again. Okay? And at the bottom, we have the listing agent's information. Now, uh, some of the things, just to recap, that you cannot do on private listing is I cannot create a CMA. So if I try to do a cloud CMA on this property, uh, private listing, you see that it is not a, a, an option. So let me select the listing, click on cloud CMA, and you see we get this message. Sorry, cloud CMA is not available for privacy property listings. If I try to do a uh, stats or anything like that, none of that is available for 
uh, the private listing. So uh, I can add to a cart, okay? So if I wanna save this listing into a listing cart, I can add it to a cart, okay? And we can also uh, share the listing. So uh, we can wanna email, we want to text the listing. Uh, we can share the listing. So if I want to go ahead, uh, I wanna email, I can just click on share and I can email the listing or I can select text and send it as a text message. Are we able to do that as well? Okay, uh, everything else uh, is available uh, in, within the reports. Okay, but let me go back to the search criteria. Okay, and another thing you can do is hot sheets. So remember, hot sheets are available for uh, coming soon features, uh, excuse me, not coming soon, for private listings. So if I try to do a hot sheet for privacy listings, then this will allow me to create a hot sheet for private listings. And I can run those hot sheets at any time uh, that I want to get the latest updates, okay? Uh, run statistics are available, okay? So if I wanna run statistics on uh, privacy listings, you can run statistics and print this report and so on, okay? All right, so that is our new feature, privacy listing. Uh, it is uh, fairly new. It's about to say maybe a couple of months uh, that we released this new feature. And so that's why you don't see that many private listings yet. But again, as agents start you know, familiarizing themselves with this feature, uh, we feel like it, it, it is going to be uh, a good tool to use uh, within the MLS. Um, now, a lot of agents think that these are pocket listings that are not pocket listings, okay, because they're still in the MLS. And so we don't accept off market sales or anything like that. So uh, as soon as you have a listing agreement, uh, you must have that listing in the MLS, whether it's a regular listing or a private listing, you must enter that into the system. So, uh, so that's pretty much my presentation. Any questions that you guys may have, please feel free to ask any questions. I don't have any questions right now in the chat. Okay. Anybody there want to open their mics? Do you have any questions? No. Nope. I think they're good, Jose. Okay. Great. That it? That's it. That's it for you today. Do. I know next uh, next month we're scheduled, or we can go over some other the other new stuff that we have, like uh, showings plus, and also uh, the. Uh, I lost my. Uh, I don't know why. I, Using all my train of thoughts here today, but he has a lot of good things coming for you next month as well, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Good. We have a lot of good. new features. Yes. Thank you so much for your presentation and the information. Of course, and anytime. We had a really nice attendance. Thank you all for joining. We will see you next month, Jose. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Stay safe. Take care. Take care, everybody.